Hi there, Internet. My name's Ollie and I love air guns. Welcome to the Classic Air Gun Show. Hello, Internet, and welcome to another episode of the Classic Air Gun Show. Uh, today we're going to start sort of a mini series on the Theobin rifles of the 80s and 90s going mainly through the gas rams, but also covering the, uh, the famous Rapid 7 as well. Now, it's so rewinding back to 1978. Uh, the urban legend is that Ben Taylor, one of the, the two founders of Theoban, was fixing a Suzuki GS1000 uh, motorcycle and so was looking at the, the air shocks and uh, thought that actually with an engineering brain that we could put that into an air gun and replace the spring. So this, was pat this idea was patented in 1980 and the first production rifles came out shortly afterwards. Now the first models through the 80s were the, uh, the Scirocco and here we have a, an example of a Scirocco Deluxe. This is number a Theoban, number 917. Uh, so pretty early on in the production run. Now, I like to think of the Theoban gas rams in three sort of generations, really the 80s, 90s and, and the 2000s. So the Scirocco's of the 80s are very much generation one. Then the, the transition was the, the Fenman at the early 90s through models such as the, the Taunus and the Olympus in the 90s. And then um, a changing of the guard again with the Scirocco 2000 and, and the evolutions into the, into the, the new millennium. Um, but going back, so uh, the gas rum system itself, as, as the name implies, is really a, an, an air compression strut uh, within the, the cylinder. So rather than using a traditional spring and, and piston, it, it used uh, that strut, so very similar to a sort of motorcycle shock absorber. The characteristics of these are um, it supposedly gives a shorter, sh quicker shot cycle. Um, whether that's true, I, I'm not a physicist, but what I can say is there's definitely a different feeling. Uh, you get, a, some would say, a sharper recoil impulse, and it definitely feels quicker. And actually, uh, it's very Marmite. So some people really hate them and actually think they, they're incredibly uh, recoiling. Others, particularly um, for my money, who spend the time to really learn to shoot them well, actually you, you can shoot these incredibly accurately. And, and I find them much less hold sensitive than comparative spring rifles, even tuned spring rifles. And I really enjoy shooting my gas rams. Um, and the proof of concept was that when, when the gas ram patent finally expired, a lot of manufacturers were lining up with their own and they're still produced today. And I've, I've got a Diana gas ram of the Entec, which again still, still encapsulates everything that I really like about the gas rams. So back to the Scirocco. Defining characteristics compared to later Theoban models. See here, the end of the breech block is slanting. It's very characteristic of the Scirocco's. And indeed, if you can see, it actually says Scirocco engraved at the end there. Um, one of the other benefits of a gas ram over spring is that they're really easy to adjust power. Over time, they will lose power. And, and that happens with all gas rams. But at the back of the strut, there's what's called a Schrader valve, which are able to screw in and adapt and either use a foot pump or a Slim Jim hand pump and, and adjust the power back up and, and down. So uh, I check mine about every five years uh, and normally they haven't lost much power and it's just a couple of pumps to get it back up to the, the right PSI. The early models, so the Scirocco, ran uh, around the around 300 PSI with a longer cocking stroke. Whereas when you move into the, and we'll cover these in next episodes, the, the HE or high efficiency uh, gas struts, these had a shorter cocking stroke but ran a much higher PSI, so much closer, sort of 750, 800. So again, very low compared to pneumatics, but you've got to be careful because that small changes in the pressure within the gas strut can have a big impact and push you over the legal limit if you're not careful. Anyway, so back to this. So the with that adjustability, which is very useful, but the early models of the Scirocco's of the 80s, uh, you couldn't do that externally. So you actually had to take the rifle down apart, uh, take the gas strut out to, to access the Schrader valve, but still much easier than, than trimming or, or mucking about with springs and grease, for, for my money anyway. Um, 
So look, that's the firing characteristics. The, the, the look of these rifles, as you can see, this is a, a particularly beautiful walnut stocked deluxe example. But the, um, there were small tweaks with the engineering throughout the, uh, the 80s, and it was very much a, an evolving model with small tweaks. But the really defining changes were, were in the woodwork. And, and they started with some really basic stocks in the very early models, but quickly moved on to some of the most beautiful recoiling rifle woodwork of, of the 1980s. So you had here the Deluxe, they also did a very beautiful thumbhole walnut stock known as the Grand Prix. And then there are other models as well with a, a more standard um, either beech or walnut ambidextrous stock with no checkering, uh, often referred to as, as a, the Countryman model. Uh, and I'll, I'll put some photos of those in the video. So whichever of the woodwork options you went for, and I've, I do have a Countryman as well in 2.2, this is a 177. Um, they were beautiful rifles. I remember first seeing these in, a, uh, in an Air Gun World book uh, written about air gun hunting by Alan Shepard, which I still, still refer to today. And he had a model very similar to this. And, uh, and since that time, I'd, I'd always sort of lusted after one. And finally, sort of last year, uh, got this one off uh, the guys up at, to Lloyd and the team up at Blackpool Air Rifles, and was incredibly happy with it. It's, it's got a Tasco a pronghorn scope on, so a nice period scope. I say it's 177. This shoots the, uh, uh, the JSB for 4.52, 8.44 grain uh, pellets incredibly well, and it shoots nicely. At uh, the front end here, you've got the original sort of slim silencer, and uh, not the most effective unit, but it is sort of an, an incredibly uh, good-looking silencer. And you saw that in the 80s, a lot of these sort of slimmer silencers, like, like from the likes of Venom, Air Mars, etc., were, were very striking. Was not as effective as the bigger models that came later. Uh, certainly looked. Uh, looks prettier to, to my eye anyway and, and when you've got beautiful flowing lines like on a rifle like this uh, you can see the difference but anyway, so there's a little overview a little brief history of the early years of Theoban um, introduction to this model so the Dulux uh, another thing with the scope is you've got the integral scope rail another Theoban innovation so as you can see here it's actually precision engineered and aligned which is very good as long as you don't mind using one inch scope mounts. Um, and that was a feature that they, they had been persisted with uh, well into the 1990s as well. It was only really in later, late, late models where, where that was discarded. But look, um, beautiful rifle. Uh, I really enjoy shooting these. I still, still hunt with this. It's taken quite a few squirrels this year. Um, so it's still very accurate. But let's take it to the range and see what it can do. So you go predictably shot incredibly well. Um, as I say, I do shoot this quite regularly. The 177 is a nice touch because a lot of Theobins, as a lot of rifles at the time, particularly for hunting, were bought in 2.2. So I was, I was pleased to find that. Um, but look, I hope you enjoyed that really interesting overview of, of an early Theobin gas ram rifle. So the first generation. I'm really looking forward to showing you some more in the, uh, in the subsequent episodes. So we're going to be moving quickly on to a, an SLR 88 in the next episode. So I hope you look forward to that. And then following up with the, uh, the Fenman and the Rapid 7 from the 90s. But look, take care, look after yourselves. If you enjoyed this, please do like the video and, and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, see you at the next episode. Thank you.